So, welcome back to the Comma Depot and to part two um, on the uh, Mini Beep um, Amphibious Jeep DIY build. Um, I know some of you have been waiting quite a while for this and I do apologise for that. But in this video, we're going to uh, look at how I installed the engine and drive gear into this into this Mini Beep. Um, and what uh, techniques I use for the mechanical side of it. Um, there's a lot of different things people are doing on the internet, so you can um, make up your own way of doing it. Um, with uh, farm use nowadays, uh, side-by-sides are becoming more popular than the original uh, quad ATVs, um, especially since they all have to have rollover protection now. And I notice more and more farmers are turning to side by side. So this is a great little thing to build for yourself if you can't afford a full side by side. And um, great fun. Kids love it. And you can uh, certainly uh, get all around your block and get uh, get just about anywhere on it. There are quite a few videos of people doing things uh, different ways. Um, this is just how I've done it. There's obviously uh, different ways to suit different people. I wanted to keep this Jeep amphibious, so that's why I've got the engine mounted up high at the back and not under the bonnet. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's have a look around it and make a start. So it is a standard Predator 7 horsepower engine, um, which is just your standard Chinese sort of engine, and um, I have the fuel pump mounted under the bonnet. Uh, I've also got a go-kart uh, forward and reverse neutral gearbox, which is coupled to the engine via a CVT transmission. Okay, so that's the cover off. So you can see the CVT uh, constantly variable transmission there, the belt, coming back to the other pulley, which is on the, um, on the gearbox. This is just a simple go-kart forward reverse gearbox uh, and I have a, a gear lever there like an automatic transmission you just select the forward or reverse or neutral um, and uh, that drives that now I've been driving this around for a couple of years that's why things are a bit dusty and grubby down here because uh, this, this Jeep has been in use for a couple of years as a as a hack around the farm we've got a battery down in there I've also installed a oil drain pipe with a tap so I can change the oil easily. Um, there's a grease gun in there. Uh, and what we have, okay, so the, um, the CVT transmission drives the gearbox. The output on the gearbox is this small chain here. Oh, it's a small chain, I think it's a 420 chain. And then that drives a jack shaft, which is set down here. And the jack shaft also has a disc brake caliper for the rear brakes on it so uh, that's a hydraulic disc again just go-kart stuff um, and uh, that runs to the brake pedal um, so this is the rear brake the front brakes are drum brakes uh, and the back brake is, is, is this disc brake um, so then the jack shaft goes through the the sort of bulkhead hull of the of the vehicle here and into the wheel shaft into the wheel uh, wheel area I should say where it then drives the back axle so that's come that's the jack shaft coming out from underneath the gearbox um, I will take this opportunity to grab my forklift I've got a 1946 conveyance of forklift there I've, I've restored we'll lift up the Jeep so you can see underneath it and um, I will uh, I could even start it and show you all this running mechanism uh, going. So let's, let's go get the forklift out.
over here. So, what you can see here is um, the jack shaft, as I was saying earlier, comes out uh, through the body well and then into the wheel arch. Um, there's another 420 chain which drives a big sprocket here. Um, and I put a 30 millimeter shaft right, right the way across. Um, <clears throat> the tensioner here, this is a little chain tensioner. This was this gave me the most grief. Getting this right was was really important. Um, I had I tried plastic rollers and things, and they just were a total pain. In the end, what I used my tensioner was a a spare sprocket off of the gearbox output shaft, and I just machined up a a piece of metal. Uh, shaft out of hardened steel to go through there uh, with some pins so I can pull it out and lubricate it and change it and then it just has adjustable um, thread with some lock nuts to uh, to adjust the chain tension since installing this I haven't had the chain come off once in over a year now it's been brilliant the chain the chain stays on through okay so we'll start her up and then um, you can see everything, including the CVT transmission, um, at work. Just bear with me a sec. hubs I made myself so I literally just got a barbecue plate an old old rusty barbecue plate I uh, drew out Ford stud pattern on it and cut them out and welded them onto 30 millimeter spacers and um, they I held on to the to the axle by these 30 millimeter coupling rings they welded onto those um, when the sprocket wears out these both still are pretty good the little one there is starting to get some wear but um, you can change them quite easily, just unbolt off of these hubs and um, replace them. What we'll do now is we'll lift it up all the way and I'll show you underneath um, the chassis I've installed and the steering. Okay, so you can see the axle there. On the, the, the strut court plans, they don't show a chassis. They just have some pressed tin to hold their axles. And <clears throat> I, I decided to use 5mm galvanized steel full length to give it some strength. And I've um, added a freewheeling hub on this side. So that's off of a Audi A80, I think. You can still buy those on eBay. Front wheel bearing assembly. And then I've adjusted it so that you've got a locking pin, which will lock through here. It's spring-loaded. I've removed it at the moment, but it screws in. And then if you want to engage both back drive wheels, um, you just flick the lever on the locking pin, and it, the spring automatically brings it in when the wheel when the wheel hub turns and lines up with it. Uh, the reason why I fitted that was with the live axle, as with Strut Corp's instructions, um, it is really hard to turn. It needs a massive turning turning radius. Um, so, and it puts a lot of strain on the drive gear having a live axle. So, I wouldn't recommend that. But um, yep. So we've just got standard 30 millimeter bearings. Um, yeah, the 
chassis comes through you can hear my forklift ticking and tucking but I'm not under the car so it's quite safe uh, front cross member I made myself so just welded up some patio tube and basically I don't know if you can see in there very well this is just go-kart front axles welded on uh, with go-kart drum brakes um, that and again the same hubs I've made up my own hubs there uh, so that's all pretty straightforward um, what we'll do now is lower it down and open the hood and I'll show you the steering Sorry if there's a bit of wind noise too, I'm outside and it's uh, getting into winter down here. Um, okay, so we've got fuel tank. So I've um, moved the fuel tank to the front here and I've installed a bigger fuel tank, a 10 litre fuel tank with fuel tank gauge sender. Uh, all the wiring, uh, we have a charge regulator from the, um, from the motor to the battery, just controls the charge. Uh, fuse box with accessories, the gauges. Uh, we have the steering, which I've made just again all out of go kart stuff. We've got a shaft there, a couple of universal joints, and another shaft going through through this front bulkhead to another chain, which uh, goes down and drives a a more sort of heavy duty go kart steering box. These cables are for my front brake cables. Uh, the only thing, if you want to keep your mini beep um, amphibious, is you need to design all of this so it's above the water line, obviously, so that water can't uh, can't can't get into it. Um, most of that, basically, if on the plans, if you stick to stick to the, to making any holes below what the plans say, you'll be sweet to go. Um, so I've got an extra jack here, jack handle. Uh, there's a horn. Kids love that, plays all sorts of different uh, tunes. Um, let's have a little look around. That about sums up the mechanical side of it. I rolled the bonnet out of um, thin sheet metal. That was pretty easy, pretty straight ball forward. Having a 3D printer helps with all this sort of stuff. I 3D printed all these little nicky necks. Um, and let's, uh, let's uh, uh, look at the um, control panel and instruments. Okay, so on the dashboard, we have um, the choke, obviously. Uh, again, 3D printers help me print out all these labels. Uh, I've used some re uh, reproduction Willys Jeep parts, like the uh, dashboard lights here. They will work, everything lights up. We've got a speedometer gauge. Everyone finds that quite funny that it goes up to 200 kilometers an hour. Um, top speed of this vehicle is about 40, maybe 45 kilometers per hour. Um, and we have the indicator turn signal controls um, and all the gauges work so I've got the uh, petrol gauge, you saw the sender in the tank we've got oil temperature, so there's an oil temperature sender in the oil filling cap a compass and a alt, alt amp meter sorry. Um, and that's about it up the front, oh, we've got two radios, we've got a UHF to a radio and also this one is just a bit of fun for the kids to uh, to play with it, it plays tunes. the kids love that one um, I also had on this stand here until recently a really awesome machine gun it was a, a gel blaster uh, replica machine gun and the kids used to love it that stand in the back and be like a gunner and uh, blast away as we're, as we're driving through the bush but unfortunately here in Australia now they've increased the laws and you're not even allowed to have uh, 
toy gel blaster guns. Um, they're, the fines for having them are quite steep, so I've had to hand that in, um, which, is, which is quite disappointing. Kids love to put on the US Army helmet down there and, uh, and have a go when the kids come and stay. Um, also have a large jack underneath. There used to be an M16 gel blaster stuck down there too, but uh, again, yep, that's gone, so now we have a jack. Um, master battery switch, just so my battery doesn't discharge if I've left lights on or anything. Um, and a fire extinguisher. Thing is made of wood, so <laughs> I'd hate for it to go up in flames if it leaks fuel or anything. Uh, floor starter, so I have fitted down here by the pedals a floor uh, ignition starter, a bit like the original Jeeps, just try and make it a bit more authentic. It's actually easier to start with a floor starter while you're pulling the choke out, holding the choke out. So, that sums up the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we have uh, another one coming on this, and this is amphibious, so I haven't shown it in the water yet, but we, uh, I, I do have a, a picture of it in the water. The reason I haven't taken it to the water is because uh, where I live is a long way from any freshwater lakes. Um, I don't want to take it in the ocean or all the steel and get it all, all, all rusty. Uh, but I do have a dam on my property. It's only small, but it's deep. So... In the next video, I'll be doing a very short one. We're going to just drive it in and uh, see how it goes. And um, I will post that video. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like. It helps the channel. Um, I want to build more things like this. And uh, I love restoring old things like my, my forklift there. That's a, a very old a forklift I brought as a wreck and restored. Um, I have a little crane there as well that's uh, got an old jet motor on it. I love restoring and building stuff. So we're going to finish the video with some four-wheel driving. We're going to go through the bush a bit. And um, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care and good luck with your Jeep and DIY builds.